you see there's a people feel that um, in the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan Islam seems to undergo a, uh, a renovation and I think there's some truth, some truth to that. I think there is some truth to that. Um, maybe, I don't, you see, I don't put it down to necessarily sinister reasons, though. A lot of the Islam revisionists, they will put this down to sinister reasons. Like, they will say Islam was made up by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, that he made everything up. I, you know, I, I, I think that's very difficult to believe. Even some of the other revisionists, like um, even Fred Donner and other people said, look, that's very un unlikely because for, you know, the amount of effort that it would have been required, uh, you know, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan to, to conduct, to construct this figure, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because they said like he made him up. Um, this was what some people felt. And he made up the entire Islam. For one caliph to have pulled that off, it was, you know, it's easier that... Because if you're looking at this from an anthropological perspective, just as an anthropologist, you're going to go for the easiest option. Like the most likely, the most um, doable human option. It's easier for the Prophet to have existed than for Abdul Malik to have pulled this off as an entire stunt. Like that's much more incredible and unlikely for one person to have pulled off such a, uh, a concoction of Islamic history, culture, Quran, legacy, religion, passion, everything. It's very, very unlikely because Abdul Malik ibn Marwan Although he was a great, you know, I'm sure he was a, a great charismatic person and he was obviously had great initiative and was a, in his own right, you know, a very powerful leader. But the level of charm and charisma and power and influence you'd need to pull off a stunt like that, it's easier and much more believable that the Prophet Muhammad actually existed. Do you understand? So that's from a historian perspective. That said, today, historians have actually uncovered uh, several Byzantine and other writers who were in the time of the Prophet, who actually mentioned the Prophet, maybe a year or two after he, he, him passing away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where they mention him as uh, Muhammad or Mahmat, um, and they speak about him, this man from Arabia with who has a religion. And they obviously don't have, generally they don't praise him, they don't believe in the Prophet, but they say this person, and some of them describe him as, oh, you know, he has a, a, a band of, uh, like, kind of nomad nomads who are raiders and things like this. But they do speak of him. And this is, un, you know, it's categorical proof that he existed. So, yeah, so I mean... Um, I'm sorry, I've slightly uh, digressed there. Yeah, so my point was that people feel that because Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, the oldest coins you have in Islam go back to him. So where it says, like he's inscripted, La ilaha illallah, things like this. Uh, the Dome of the Rock was built by him. Um, that's actually an interesting question, why he built the Dome of the Rock. It makes, uh, it doesn't make as much sense actually. I think it may have been to rival a uh, a kind of holy ground. Um, but it doesn't actually make much sense. The Dome of the Rock, rock the Masjid, you know, the actual Qubba the, the the Golden Dome Mosque that you have today in Jerusalem. This was built by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. And some of the oldest inscriptions of the Quran you have still there that are in some of the... Uh, ambulatory, some of the walkways, internal walkways, they actually date back to his time, some of them. Um, now, a lot of it has been renewed over the ages, but there are some old inscriptions that have been uh, archaeologically kind of checked and dated. So this is why they feel everything goes back, to, a lot of things go back to him. He's also one of the people, he in his time uh, mandated that people take up Arabic as the as the as the official lingua franca 
because even in the early Sahaba time, the Muslims may have been writing in Arabic on their own, but the main records they kept in other places were in their languages. So they would have kept the Greek records in Greek. They would have kept the Persian ones in Persian. They weren't, things weren't Arabicized. Um, and, and a lot of Muslims used to use the Greek, the Byzantine kind of scribes to do the writing. And it's in Abdul Malik ibn Marwan's time that he passes the, the edict to say that, right, everything's going to be in Arabic. And it creates a bit of a, 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 a storm. But by doing so, he actually propels the Arabic language to magnitudes that were unforeseeable before. So, I mean, it is amazing. And one of the stories has it that he... Um, th I mean, this is one of the stories that they say that the scribe that they used to have, the person who would do the documents, he was a Byzantine. Uh, a lot of them were monks sometimes because they could read and write, Christian monks. But this Christian, they say that he actually urinated. <laughs> he needed to take a leak and he couldn't be bothered. So he urinated in the ink pot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like target <laughs> it's like target engaged <laughs> that's gotta be I mean if unless it's a massive ink pot because <laughs> as most men know it doesn't matter how good you think your target is <laughs> the, the, the command the chain of command just does not follow <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like okay target engaged and then it's that way, you're like, huh? <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> Why can't you follow a simple chain of command? I'm looking over there, aim over there. <laughs> what's this like? <laughs> what kind of <laughs> cluster bombs are you dropping? So, this, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so this, uh, uh, a scribe, what he did was he urinated in the ink pot. This is what the, the myth has it. And this news reached Abdul Malik and he said that what the hell, you know, is this what they're doing and we're writing, we're using them to write our kind of, uh, you know, holy stuff as well or other stuff as well, which has, you know, names of God in there or things like this. And so he said, enough. I'm not going to use them. We're going to use our own people and our own script. So the myth has it. Allahu A'lam. Whatever it was, but Abdul Malik definitely, you know, he is a huge kind of an epicenter for where things just drastically change. So, yeah, now with him, they, they do feel that this term Islam is brought more to the forefront in his lifetime. It may be, it may be that he... Uh, kind of brought that more to the forefront uh, these things once again they don't really impact us as muslims like we're not we shouldn't become insecure it's not a you know it's not it's no it's not a big deal like that it's a nuanced change but it's nothing you know it doesn't mean oh my god islam is fake <laughs> it doesn't mean anything like that it's just saying that look obviously all things would take a slight institutionalization process along the ages Right, so let's move on. What are the 